at the Legends in Kansas City and just came out here to shoot to test out this uh, new little stabilizer the Yulongo S60 if I remember the name correctly it's cool I'm having a hard time getting it balanced but uh, it's cool once I figure it out I'll be straight yeah just came out here to test it out get some footage of CC walking around the Legends ended up buying a pair of jeans from Express so about to head back home and watch the Chiefs play Punch me like right at the end, right after that last little thing I did. But you know, I'm gonna add one more thing. Curious, curious now. Curious, cause you're so sad. Curious, I'm trying to deny you. So I wanted to talk to you guys real quick about something I get asked a lot about and that is do I mix while I'm recording? Am I adding plugins and starting the mix while I'm recording? Um, do I mix on the clock? Uh, let's say an artist books a, a hourly session. Am I trying to record and mix in that same session? This is something I used to struggle with all the time going back and forth on like do I want to record Let's say someone books two hours and they're trying to record a song, mix it, and have it ready for them to release in that two hour block. In most genres, that's not a normal thing. In hip hop, however, it's pretty, it's pretty common that you come across dudes who are trying to get a whole song, maybe even two songs done in just a couple hours. And when I say done, I mean recorded and mixed and ready to release. So I used to struggle with that all the time because my mix rate is way more than my my hourly rate and uh so you're kind of self you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot a little bit um trying to record a song and then you've got what 30 minutes to an hour to finish a mix uh, so here's what i do one you have to look at it case by case not everybody is going to have the funds for your mix not every artist is as even though that you know being an artist is their dream is their goal not every artist is really serious just like everybody has some sort of dream life that they could have but not everybody is seriously as much as they don't want to admit it not everyone is seriously on that pursuit so you got to look at it like okay do i want to pass up on this money um and I'm only working with these select few serious artists or uh, while I have this open two blocks, I could make X amount of dollars um, versus not making anything. Um, plus you're providing a service for guys who, you know, genuinely love making music. They just don't understand uh, the amount of work and effort it takes to really make a legitimate record. So. You know, it's something, again, like I said, I used to struggle with. I used to, like, preach to artists all the time. like, man, if you, wanna, if you want your record to sound legit, a 20-minute mix is not going to get you there. You'll have dudes who are like, bro, like, the mix, I, I wanted my mix to sound like this. And then they'll pull up a, a industry release record. And... They're like, yeah, my it just doesn't sound like that. I want the drums hitting like this. I want my vocal like this. I want the word. I need the bass to hit harder. And I'm like, bro, the mix, the the beat wasn't even tracked out. It matter, it wasn't even a wave file. It wasn't tracked out. I have no control over that. You know, if you want a proper mix, you have there's a proper way for you to go about it. 
Um, so a lot of guys just simply don't understand that. So just to make to answer my to answer the original question, uh, no, I don't mix while I'm recording. The only effects I might throw on while I'm recording is auto tune if a singer wants it, maybe some reverb if they want it. Um, if they're doing ad libs, I might throw on some sort of like radio effect just so that way they can hear it back in their headphones get a little bit more hyped and amped up into it but other than that no i'm not mixing as i record some mixers do i don't think it's a right or wrong way i just prefer not to do it um two yes i do take those clients who you know are booking a two-hour session and they're trying to get a whole pro a whole song done mixed you know recorded and mixed during that time and ready to release um, you know, to me, I, I remember what it's like being that artist and just remembering the amount of just happiness and joy I would get from hearing my record, even though I didn't understand it wasn't, you know, a proper, it wasn't a proper, it wasn't, it wasn't a truly finished record, but I just remember being like proud of that. Um, you know, I may have had 60 bucks to my name and I spent it all on trying to get this song created and here's the finished, in my mind, finished product. Um, so yeah, I, I appreciate those dudes because again, they simply love what they do, even though, you know, they don't understand or they're not willing to take the next step to really pursue their passion. Um, there's nothing wrong with with them and doing what they're what they're doing you know it may not progress them anywhere or it may who knows but uh yeah i take on those artists as well i've just been asked that question quite a bit like how do you handle uh your mix rate during those types of sessions and that's what i do i just do it hourly on the clock and if the artists a lot of times you'll find that those artists uh either one they don't appreciate or understand what a good mix is and they can't even hear the difference or two They'll, want, they'll come back and they'll be like, hey man, I want my mix to sound like this. And I'll explain to them at that time, like, yo, you want a proper mix, you need to do this, you need to get the track out, it's, it's gonna cost you this much money. Um, and I'll pull up those songs that they're referencing and I'll be like, yo, I've I studied this engineer, this is how long he takes on a mix. And you wanted me to finish your mix in 35 minutes. So you could see the difference and why there's a difference. So yeah, you just gotta be real upfront with them. Um, and understand that there's going to be two different types of clients. You're going to have your dudes who think they're serious, but they're not. And you're going to have your dudes who really are serious. So, um, yeah, do what you want to do. There's to me, there's no right or wrong way, but I just love being in the studio. So, you know, anybody that's trying to get in, come on through. Well, you just got done hooping, girl. Yeah, I'm freaking tired. We played three on two and me and this other coach were the defense the whole entire time. And they started with 30 lines, and if they scored on us, they got a line taken away. So they were, like, trying really hard, and it was for 10 minutes straight. Oh, defense. so they didn't have Ten to sprint? Yeah. Dang, girl. They still ended up with 20 lines, so. Oh, because you was balling? Mm -hmm. mm. So tonight, we're having breakfast for dinner, so we came to Walmart, grabbing some stuff for French toast, gonna get some eggs. Some of you guys asked me where I get the 60 eggs for $3.50. Get it from Walmart, of course. Ever have to fight with your woman about who's gonna push the cart inside, of, inside the grocery store? Especially whenever I got the camera. What's your point? <laughs> She's still not used to me carrying this camera around talking to it. Tell her to stop worrying about what people think.
do it. You ain't listening, man. You just don't want to do it. Acting scared. I'm not that, acting that, that, scared. That's really it all it like is. Too much to no, me. it's not. It's the end of the damn song. Just include it. <laughs> It, hey, if you done already made it to that part, you don't care if it's too much. You done made it to the end of the song. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's too late to lose them right. at that point. Right. <laughs> hey, man, play One Wish. You won't hear too much. <laughs> <laughs> Some people wish to be a superstar, wish to have a fancy car, wish to have a million bucks. All I really want is your love. Tantu, teaching you the language of beats. Let's go.